How much money were you making? Do you remember what your salary uh, was then? Yeah, I do because I had to get a regular job. At the same time, I was making five grand and that was five grand Canadian. $5,000 to yep. be a professional women's hockey player. Yep, that was all. Brent Mantis is from the slot and she puts it in the top shelf. Former MVP getting it done. Makayla Grant Mentis does the job. And Grant Mentis has a hat trick. Hockey is certainly in your family. You think of your, your father, and I think you've got a great-great-grandfather who yeah. also played. Yes, yeah, so my dad's side of the family is from Nova Scotia, and they played in the first um, black hockey team in Nova Scotia. And basically, if you go anywhere in Nova Scotia and have the last name Mentis, everybody knows you just because of them. So it definitely goes down in history all the way from my great-great-grandfather all the way down to my dad, which he didn't play ice hockey, he only played ball hockey, but he still was very good at it. He was the captain of Team Canada for many years. So was it almost inevitable that you were going to play hockey? You know what? My dad actually didn't want me to play. He made me join dance first, which was terrible. It's like the worst time <laughs> of my not life. That's going to be your thing. Yeah, and he said if I do this one performance that we had in dance class, um, I'd be able to like try on skates and go out with my brothers. And I did the performance perfectly, and I never went back. <laughs> and <laughs> one and done. Yep, played hockey all the way from there, and that was it. Oh! Fired in! Michaela Grant Mentis! I know you had said though once, I basically have been overlooked my entire career. What did you mean by that? I've been overlooked by many people, starting from like the Team Canada round to pro teams, I guess you can say. It was kind of like I was always the underdog. Later on in my career, I was like, well, it's okay. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. I'm pretty successful so far, so yeah. obviously I'm doing something right. I was going to say, they can't ignore you anymore, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. Grant Mentis always dangerous with her speed. She slots it through. Michaela Grant Mentis, strong season, continues. When you sign with the Toronto Six, Angela James is behind the bench. Mm -hmm. She is known as the Wayne Gretzky of women's hockey. Had you guys connected at all before then? What did you know of Angela? It was definitely nice to have her back there and, you know, just kind of giving us a, a look into how hockey was back then to how it is now and how, you know, grateful we should be because how it was back then was nothing like how it is now. For her being a trailblazer in women's hockey, but also being one of the few black women to play hockey, did you to have that conversation ever. Yeah, you know, we did talk a little bit about it, especially now because there are not many black women still playing this sport. It's a slow process, but you know, what she's doing in Toronto and hopefully what others are doing can grow the game more and there can be more people of color playing. Grant Mentis streaking ahead with two, one, she scores! Rating MVP! So you played two seasons with the Toronto Six. How much money were you making? Do you remember what your salary uh, was then? Yeah, I do because I had to get a regular job. At the same time, I was making five grand, and that was five grand Canadian. Five thousand dollars to yep. be a professional women's hockey player. Yep, that was all. So you took on another job. Yep. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I started working at FedEx maybe like a week later after I signed my contract, knowing that I will need another job because I wasn't making enough. It was kind of just a mindset. It's, it's not going to be forever, but I have to do this now. Well, it wasn't forever, because <laughs> then when you look, summer of 2022, I mean, you made history. You signed a one-year deal with the Buffalo Buttes. $80,000 US made you the highest paid female hockey player. You made history. How did that all come together? In between the calls with my agent and Buffalo, like, they were saying numbers, and I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds good. Like, not even really putting it all together until afterwards when someone tweeted it, and that's when it really would, like clicked to me. Like, Resonated. Oh wow, like, I'm actually making a lot of money. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's when it clicked, and then everyone started saying like, oh, like, this is huge, it's just groundbreaking for the league, groundbreaking for women's hockey and everything. So that's when it really started clicking, and then, you know, I'm grateful to be the first person to get that. You are part of a documentary called Ice Queens. I just wonder when director Kwame Mason would have come to you with wanting to have you as a part of it. What did he tell you about what he wanted this documentary to be? <laughs> he was just very adamant that, you know, we need to, to show the women of color in this sport, whereas they're a coach, a player, whoever they are, 
we need to give them a spotlight, basically. How important does it make you realize representation is? Yeah, representation is, is huge, and I think, you know what, if you don't want to be a player, you can also be a coach, you can be a GM, you can do whatever you want in the sport, but there is a spot for you, and I think that's what the documentary is doing, and I think it's going to be a great film for many kids to watch. What sort of is the main message that you would want people watching this to be? Just never give up. Believe in yourself. That's kind of my message to everyone whenever I speak to people.